So today I'm in beautiful Oban for another instalment of drone news. I'll be interviewing one of their mountain rescue team members called Alistair, who we recently sold a DJI M30 T2. He'll be telling us a bit about the drone and how it's helped them as a mountain rescue team here on the west coast of Scotland. So without further ado, let's go to their base down here in Oban and have a little chat. Hi Alistair, thanks for talking to us today. Um, I wonder if you could just start off by telling us when Open Mountain Rescue Team started to use drones. Okay, for us in the Mountain Rescue Team, we started looking at using drones, it'd be five years ago. So there was always the concept and the thought of drones were available. Um, but we actually went to our Scottish Mountain Rescue to do a training seminar every year up at Glenmore Lodge and we went there and Sarah, who is the Search and Rescue Aerial Association for Scotland, were there doing demos so you could go do a workshop and that's when we first really got interested into drones and what they're actually capable of doing for search and rescue. Um, and from then on, we then went back and looked at what was available, what we could afford to spend and ended up buying a Zoom 2 and then becoming involved with Sarah to get a training programme for use of the drones. So you recently purchased a DJI M30T. Are you able to give us your initial thoughts on this drone? Um, the M30T is very impressive. It's, I believe, the first drone for search and rescue. Um, the drone is heavier than what we're used to having, but the actual capability of the drone is so much more and impressive. Um, the four cameras on it is they're out of the world. So it's a complete new flight hub to us to use. Um, the handsets bigger and you've got a good vision on it. So basically we came from a Zoom 2, which was just basically a small optical zoom on it. We've now got a larger zoom so the drone can stand off further um, when we're doing searches. We now have thermal capability. We can now fly at night time. I said, but the, probably the most important thing for us was the weatherproof. The fact that we can now fly in the rain. We're in Scotland, we're on the west coast and it's wet here a lot. So a lot of the time the drone will be grounded because of either heavy mist or light drizzle or rain, whereas we can actually still use this drone when it's raining. And one of the other key features of the M30T, which is important to us, it can actually pinpoint the exact location of casualty. And um, we can bring up and put an antidote on it. It gives a lap long of where the casualty is, whereas you don't have that capability with any other drone. And it's also got the rangefinder on it. Now, I know you've only had it for a while, but how has it helped open MRT uh, since its arrival, or how can you see it helping it in the future? Um, so in used practical terms, we haven't actually had it out on a call-out yet, as yet, because it has to be the right situation for use of the drone. Um, but in team training, we have had it out where some colleagues have gone and hid, um, and we've used a thermal camera and the zoom capabilities of it to pick them out and find them and give a GPS position of where they are hiding from the drone. So what are the search techniques that you'll often use when out in the field with drones in the mountains? Um, when we turn out to do a search, we also have to look at the area we're going to search, whether it's going to be one area or we might take the area and divide it into three or four different areas, um, depending on the situation, whether it's along a track or um, area of a hillside, which might have different bits that we can cordon off. Um, which would help us then decide where we're actually going to deploy the drone from um, so we can cover as much ground as possible from the one location using the visual line of sight um, and then we'll break it into a grid search and do kind of linear searches depending on what the terrain is that we're trying to cover. When we're out doing a search um, it's normally not just a drone pilot we would actually have a drone pilot and an observer so the observer we immerse them in the experience and they'll be wearing goggles so all they can see is what the drone is actually showing them through the main camera um, and they can actually direct the drone pilot where they want to look and where if they pick up anything interesting we can then zoom in for them so they're completely immersed in the, what they're actually being shown by the drone. So would you say that drones are the future for mountain rescue teams going forward from this point on? 
I think drones will have more part to play. Um, they're quite limited, I think, throughout mountain rescue at the moment. I think this new drone is going to be quite popular within the teams that can finance it. Um, it's going to be a tool in the toolbox for them. We've got, you know, it's not just going to be drones as the answer. It's going to be a combination of drones, helicopters, and the dog searches as well, and people on the ground. It just depends where you're going, but it's another tool that will save time and resources if the situation is appropriate for the drone. So what would you like to see changed with uh, future models of these sort of drones that are designed for first responders? Or what do you think holds back the M30T at the moment? Uh, we've only had the M30T for a short period of time, so we're still getting used to it. The biggest drawback for it is the fact that it's quite heavy and bulky, and we haven't actually come up with a solution for making it more portable on the hill. So it's good if you can drive to a location, maybe walk a short distance. But if you were to take it up onto the ridge of a Monroe, um, there isn't actually anything on the market at the moment to package it properly and keep it safe and allow you to take our own personal rescue equipment with us at the same time at the moment. So we're still looking into that. Um, so a development in a new rucksack would be good for it, specifically for sort of the mountain rescue environment. The M30T, we can pinpoint on its map the location of a casualty just by touching the screen, it drops a wee triangle and you can name it and it gives you the lat long and its location, distance from you or height above sea level. But it would be good if you could actually change that in the options and bring it into British National Grid, um, which is what we're all used to working in. It's not such an issue because we can convert it at this moment in time, but if they did that into British Grid, it would be great. Our total package of the M30T uh, involved us getting four sets of batteries overall so that we have a built in, we can fly for a long time. Um, we bought an additional battery for the handset so that it's powered and you don't have to worry about the battery life of the handset. Um, we've also got Norden, unfortunately it hasn't come yet, a spotlight and speaker unit that goes on top of the drone which would allow us then to communicate with casualties, maybe get some more information about what they actually require so that for the people that are bringing the first aid or rigging capabilities, um, it would help with that and we could light up areas in the dark if we're doing rigging so we can see fall lines down hills or just even to illuminate an area um, to allow us to package or deal with casualties more efficiently rather than being in the dark. Right, thank you very much for talking to us, Alistair, Edward Run Company. We wish you all the best with the future using the M30. Thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs>